Episode 4 starts with Alexia waking up on a bed, chained down with magical ceiling chains. She hears a noise to her right and notices some abomination in the other room. A guy comes into the cell, repeating royal blood. Alexia asks, how do you do? Is he her kidnapper? But he just keeps repeating royal blood. Then uses a syringe to draw blood from her. She asks him what is he going to do with her blood. He says that the blood is demon blood. He is going to resurrect a demon in the modern day. She says, I see, that sounds lovely. Not that she knows what that means. After the intro, Sid is seen getting beaten up by two people saying that he's the only one who could have possibly done it. They're going to ask one more time, where did he hide Princess Alexia? Sid thinks to himself, the physical pain is something he can just put up with. The bigger issue is, they hit him telling him that keeping his mouth shut won't solve his problem. Sid finishes his sentence, this interrogation is such classic minor character material. Such a high degree of NPC-ness. He can't let them out unshine him. One of the guys tells him that they're going to have to give him a wider variety of pain. Sid begins to freak out, saying that he doesn't know anything. However, the guy stabs needles into his leg. Sid plays it up, thinking to himself, how do they like that? He's a much better background character. Then begins to beg for his life, but thinks, still, how long is this going to go on? Alexia is telling herself that they should have started looking for her ages ago, knowing her sister, and tells the doctor she'd appreciate it if he didn't take too much of her blood. She's not ready to die yet. He tells her he knows. He won't. He wants lots and lots, so he'll make sure he can keep taking more, and says it wasn't supposed to be like this. If it hadn't been for all those idiots, she agrees. She hates idiots too. He goes on. His lab. They destroyed it. Then they kept, and the needle breaks. He was so close. He has to complete it soon, or he'll be excommunicated. He goes into the other room and begins to beat up on the other person. Alexia brings his attention back to her, and he grabs a bowl of something, and brings up that her blood levels have gone down. He was forgetting to feed her, and forces her to eat. We then get a meeting between Zenon and Princess Iris. He tells her that he feels partly responsible as the incident most likely happened on school grounds. She tells him that she doubts anyone would find any fault in him personally. Right now, their highest priority is saving Alexia, and she understands that there's a strong possibility she was kidnapped by a student named Sid Kagano. He says it's true. The circumstantial evidence is against him, but knowing his skill level, even if he did attack Princess Alexia, he doubts he could have overpowered her. While she's looking at the reports, she brings up that after five days of interrogation, he's given them nothing, but they will continue to monitor him once he's been released. Zenon says as long as he remains a suspect, that is the right course of action, but he's inclined to believe him. She agrees. She'd prefer not to suspect her sister's schoolmates as well. They'll have to wait for the report before making a decision. He tells her if there's anything he can do to help, just let him know. She says in that case, She'd like him to assist in maintaining order at the academy. He brings up that the students are all under lockdown, and they've been instructed to stay in their dorms when not in class. However, we see outside that Sid's sister is making a commotion. What I assume is the student council president tells her that whatever her reason may be, they are not allowed outside their dorm. Iris tells Zenon that she'll continue to trust him with keeping the students safe. While looking at Claire, she thinks, for her brother. I guess we all care about family. Back then, crossing swords was all it took for them to understand each other. But now, when was the last time they talked to each other? Sid is thrown out and told to get out of here. On the train, he thinks to himself he could heal his wounds instantly, but that wouldn't be a very background character thing to do. It makes eye contact with two guys on the train that are tasked with tailing him. As he's walking down the street, a figure passes by him and tells him, Later. He enters his room where Alpha is waiting for him. She hands him some food, and he brings up that he thought it was Beta's turn to be on personal assistant duty. So what brings her here? She tells him that she got a call and came back. She's heard that he's gotten into some trouble. He says, I guess so. How are things with her? She tells him that they're making more progress on their investigation of the cult. Of course, they've been increasing their organization's influence as well. They're still not as strong as the cult yet, but they're growing steadily. 
He thinks to himself, he sure they all live free, normal lives most of the time, but sometimes they'll stop by like this and play along with his game. He really appreciates it. He lays down and Alpha tells him that he should at least change out of those clothes, but he tells her he can't. She asks if he understands the position he's in. The way things are going, he'll be blamed for the crime. He says, I know. The lackluster son of a poor baron is the perfect patsy. She brings up that they can't trust the night order. He asks, the cult got them? She says yes, beyond any doubt. It was the cult who kidnapped the princess. The royal family has a higher concentration of hero's blood in their veins, and doesn't know why he was cultivating a romantic relationship with her highness. He tells her that he doesn't think any romance was cultivated. She says, I know. He carries a heavy burden on his shoulders, but she wishes he would trust them more. He says, I will. She says, then, all right. Once they've solved this case, he owes her some tuna king. That was her sandwich. And tells him to lie low for a while. She'll send word when they're ready. Before she leaves, she asks if she can dispose of the people who interrogated him first. He asks why. They were only doing their job. If anything, they deserve a reward. She says, is that so? Well, let her know if he changes his mind. And brings up that Delta's here as well. She's been missing him. We see that Alexia is kind of a husk now. She whispers something to the person in the other cell, but we don't get to hear what she says. After that, Sid is seen moving furniture, saying that he's prepared everything for this day. Vintage wine from the southwest region of French, 900,000 zenny. Glasses, also produced in French, 450,000 zenny. The elusive masterpiece he happened to pick up, and to create the soft light that will bring it all together in perfect ambiance, he'll top it off with this antique lamp. Hunting all those bandits, crawling around to pick up whatever coins he could find on the ground, it was all to complete his eminence and shadow collection. And as one final touch, he'll take this letter that just arrived today and set it here. Now he just has to wait. Night arrives and Beta enters the room, and while she's taking it in, he tells her that the time has come. This night is a world of shadow. She says, a world of shadow. A night with the moon hidden, truly a fitting world for them. And tells them that everything is in place. Under Lady Alpha's orders, they've gathered all available personnel in the royal capital. Their plan is to launch simultaneous attacks on all of the Fenrir sect hideouts of the Diablos cult scattered throughout the capital. At the same time, they will search for traces of Princess Alexia's magic. Once they find her, they will take her into custody. Gamma will take general command, while Lady Alpha leads the troops on site. Epsilon will take charge of the rear support, and Delta will leave the vanguard and signal the start of the operation. Each unit will consist of, but he stops her by holding up the note and says his apologies to Delta, but he will be playing the prelude. Tonight, the world will know them. The two interrogators are talking to each other, wondering where the people tailing Sid went. Do they have any idea how terrifying this organization can be? Then they notice that Sid is walking down the stairs and throw one of Alexia's boots at him. Then ask, what is he doing with one of her boots? There are traces of her magic all over it. They pull out their swords and tells him if he would have just talked, he could have spared himself a lot of pain and tells him that he's under arrest for kidnapping the royal princess Alexia. However, Sid kills one of them and cuts the arm off the other. He starts to say, don't think you can get away with treating the Night Order like, but Sid tells him no worries. By the time the sun is up, this will all be over. Some guy is giving Iris a report that the situation is complicated, but they've been able to identify at least eight locations. They've confirmed that the destruction is being perpetrated by an organized group. She tells him that she wants the security team to focus their activities around the school. She's going to the front lines. The doctor bursts into the room, saying it's all ruined, and brings up that he made a prototype. Now, even this defect can make itself useful. She tells him, I wouldn't do that. However, he does, and the defect becomes huge and kills the doctor, then sets Alexia free and breaks out of the facility. Alexia frees herself from the shackles and grabs a sword. As she's leaving, she runs into Zenon, telling her that he can't have her running out on them. She asks, what is he doing here? He tells her that this is his facility. He's funded that man's research. She says, what a relief. She always thought he must not be right in the head. 
it looks like she was right. He brings up that with her blood and his research, he'll be guaranteed the 12th seat in the rounds, the highest ranking knights in the order. It comes with money and fame that doesn't even compare to what he has now. Actually, Iris would have made a more fitting offering, but he'll have to do with her. She attacks him, and he says, ah, my bad. He forgot that she hates being compared to her sister. The exchange blows for a bit. He tells her it's better than usual, but she'll never be more than a fencer ordinaire. She attacks again, but he completely overpowers her, then punches her, saying that she'll never be like her sister. She's coming with him. We see that Sid is walking down the hall that they're in. Zenon says a man clad in purest black. Sid stops and introduces himself as Shadow, he who lurks in the shadows in order to hunt the shadows. Then the episode ends. Some personal thoughts. I really enjoy watching this anime. It's like fun cringe. Sid is basically LARPing as like an edgelord, yet the rest of Shadow's Garden actually buys in and believes that he's like a supreme being, kind of like um, Overlord, you know? I'm glad the girls are back. I think they add a lot to the story. I uh, Hopefully we'll learn more about them. I'm looking forward to the fight between Sid and Zenon. I feel like it's going to be one-sided where Sid is just toying with him the whole time, but we'll obviously win in the end. Beta mentioned that they will take the princess into custody, so I wonder what that means and what they want to do with her. And I'm also curious if he will reveal to Alexia that he is Sid. I enjoyed the episode, but that's about it. So yeah.